Hello there. Today I'm out for a hike in Right Hand Fort Canyon off of Logan Canyon here in northern Utah. And I'm going to try and make it out to the gravesite of Old Ephraim the Grizzly Bear. So if you want to hear the story of Old Ephraim, stay tuned. It's coming up. Let's get started. Old Ephraim was not your average grizzly bear. He was huge. Weighing in at over a thousand pounds, he roamed the area of the current Cache National Forest here, just east of Logan, Utah. His tracks were distinctive by comparison to other grizzly bears. He could easily be identified by their size. Ephraim's impressive size, his appetite was also impressively large. In addition to the regular berries, small birds, and fish, and mammals that regular grizzly bears ate, Old Ephraim developed a bit of a taste for the local sheep of the region. As the area became more and more populated in Cache Valley, sheep herders and ranchers expanded into the mountains, and Old Ephraim found food essentially at his footsteps. So, he began to decimate the local sheep population. Enter in 1911, Mr. Frank Clark. Frank Clark arrived in Cache Valley from neighboring Idaho in the summer of 1911. Being part owner in the Ward Clark Sheep Company, he began to develop a personal vendetta against the local bear population, and Old Ephraim in particular. In the first summer he spent in the valley alone, he counted over 150 domestic sheep that were killed by local bears in the area. By 1914, Frank had had enough and decided to put together a plan to stop old Ephraim's terror reign once and for all. Ephraim wasn't about to go down without a fight. Frank Clark set traps all over the mountains in the area, but constantly found them either unsprung, tripped, 
were just flung straight out of the ground. Old Ephraim wasn't your average bear. He knew what was going on and was about to go down without a fight. What followed was a nearly nine year battle between Mr. Clark and Old Ephraim on who would win in the mountains of Logan Canyon. <laughs> Frank Clark and Old Ephraim played a dangerous cat and mouse game, with Frank setting traps all over the mountain, but never being able to trap Old Ephraim, until that fateful night on August 21st, 1923. Frank was asleep in his bed in the mountains when suddenly he woke to the tremendous roars of Old Ephraim. He sprang from his bed, grabbed his rifle, and ran down the hill with his dog. There, he found Old Ephraim and snared in one of the traps he had set earlier in the wallows. The massive bear had his huge paw stuck in the trap and was dragging a giant log that Frank had tied the trap to back and forth all over the ground. Frank quickly fired five shots from his rifle into the bear, but he did not go down. Fearing for his life, Frank ran back up the hill while his dog stayed and harassed the bear. Frank Clark didn't sleep a wink that night. He listened to the old bear roar, growl, and slowly fade away. When morning came, Frank walked back down the hill to investigate, and old Ephraim was no more. Ephraim was finally gone. At his time of death, the bear stood over 10 feet tall and weighed upwards of 1,100 pounds. Frank Clark skinned and buried him where he lay, and later expressed regret for having killed old Ephraim, 
describing him as the hardest of them all. The grave was later dug up by a local Boy Scout troop who sent the skull off to the Smithsonian Museum where it was finally identified as a grizzly bear. The boys covered the grave with a large pile of stones to the local area, though these were later pilfered away by tourists. That would not, however, be the end of Old Ephraim. In the mid-1960s, over 40 years since Old Ephraim had passed, another permanent monument was erected by Boy Scouts at the site of his death. It still stands today, right over here. In memoriam, this rugged four and one half ton native stone is symbolic of a giant grizzly bear called Old Ephraim who ranged this area for many years, killing sheep, cattle, and game, and was trapped, shot, and buried near here, August 1923, by Frank Clark of Malad, Idaho. Standing upright, he equaled the height of this monument, 9 foot 11 inches, and weighed about 1,100 pounds. The Smithsonian Institute in Washington, D.C. has his skull, erected by local scouts and scouters, August 22, 1966. Old Ephraim, Old Ephraim, your deeds were so wrong, Yet we built you this marker and sing you this song. To the king of the forest so mighty and tall, we salute you, Old Ephraim, the king of them all. Many see the legend of Old Ephraim as representing the final taming of the American West. Now, nearly 100 years later, there are no more grizzlies in Utah, and even black bears are a very rare sight. His story also comes to symbolize the ultimate battle between man and beast. As human populations grow ever larger and encroach on wildlife habitat, more and more of these cases are bound to happen. Let's let Old Ephraim stand as a reminder why we must protect wilderness areas such as these. Old Ephraim's legend will always live on and he will never be forgotten for all those who come to visit Cache National Forest.